In some ways along the Colorado Front Range, we have to look at this as a year-round fire season. Yeah, right now on Denver 7 News at 7 o'clock on Local 3, fire danger is an everyday concern now. So we have team coverage this morning breaking down how to better understand the risk and ways to protect yourself if and when the worst happens. Plus, a closer look at how our state's lawmakers are working to help first responders and wildfire recovery as we brace for an already active fire season. Yeah, we always hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. And we really need some rain in here. Thanks for joining us on this Friday morning. I'm Brian Sanders. And I'm Jessica Crawford. Want to get right to it on this weather action day because we have the high winds and the dry conditions out there creating this fire danger, Lisa. And scary time, right? It's yeah. only April and we're, we're looking at some spring showers. Hopefully this weekend we're going to get a little help. But when you look at our fire danger here, it is a Denver 7 weather action day. It's going to be extreme today, tomorrow, and in fact into Sunday, we're going to see that risk, that fire risk go down as things cool down, as the winds die down a bit. Uh, and as we see, uh, well, here in town, hopefully a little bit of rain. Right now, wind speeds are at about about 10 to 20 miles per hour. It's a pretty calm start to our Friday morning. We're expecting these winds to kick up though here by about 10 to 11 o'clock. You're going to start to notice the difference. 65 already in Denver, so we are above our normal high for the day and it's only 701 in the morning just to give you an idea of how fast it's going to warm up. 60 in Centennial, 47 in Thornton, 53 in Golden. 40s right now in the high country. It's going to be a lot colder in the mountains this weekend and snow is on the way. But look at our highs today near 90 uh, in Pueblo, La Junta, Lamar, 82 in Denver. Coming up, we're going to take a look again at the winds, the speeds this afternoon and just how much cooler it gets this weekend. You guys coming up on the Super 7 day. Lisa, thank you. Today, the governor and the Colorado Division of Fire Prevention will release the 2022 wildfire outlook for our state. In the last two years, we've seen three of the largest wildfires in Colorado's history and the most devastating urban fire right here in the metro area. You'll note three of these fires didn't start in the summer. Two were during the fall and one took place during the winter. Experts say we're now in a year round fire season. The weather doesn't look at the calendar. So for the rest of us where it may feel like this is spring and we shouldn't have wildfire, unfortunately, that's just how it is along the Colorado Front Range. We've been saying that, you know, the Front Range is primed for these types of events. We've always had winds. Uh, we always have dry fuels really from the late summer going all the way through until green up in the spring. Um, so that potential has always existed. Um, it's always just taken that, that one spark or that one um, thing to really establish such a catastrophic event. And we did see that catastrophic Marshall fire in December in Superior in Louisville. Right. And if it feels like we've been under more red flag warnings this year, we have, which is why some weather experts are now concerned that we'll become numb to these alerts. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta joined us from Boulder County this morning with how to keep these warnings from becoming background noise. So the hope is that never happens. Experts want everyone to take these warnings seriously. And on days like today, when eventually we'll see those wind speeds start kicking up, experts believe that that'll be enough for people to really take that fire danger into consideration. And like you just mentioned, if you think you've seen and heard more of those red flag warnings, it's because you have. The criteria has not changed. We have seen a record number for the month of April. Uh, we've been issuing these since 2006. And so far this month, including today's, uh, we're at 12 red flag events, uh, which is a record for the month of April. And a little bit of context for you all. These red flag warnings, they get issued when there's high fire concern. That means humidity is expected to be at 15% or less. And those wind gusts are expected to be at least 25 miles an hour for three hours or longer. Now, because there have been a record number of these warnings this month, officials say they're aware of what they tend to call warning fatigue though they say they don't let that influence decisions or criteria for any kind of warning. The goal, as you can imagine, is to always keep people informed and keep them safe. The message is actually quite simple. We don't necessarily need you to take specific actions with every warning. A lot of things are just kind of a one time or, or maybe twice per season kind of thing. Uh, make sure that you have a go bag packed with essential supplies for a few days. Make sure that your property is clear, uh, you know, has decent defensible space, gutters are clear of leaves, and also make sure that you're signed up for emergency alerts. 
And coming up in the next half hour, why climatologists tell, tell us that you've seen more of these red flag warnings. We're live in Boulder County this morning. I'm Veronica Acosta, number seven. Veronica, thank you. And something to keep in mind, current fire restrictions could affect your weekend plans. Boulder, Jefferson and Douglas counties already have stage one fire restrictions put in place. That means there's no open burning of any kind. Arapaho and Adams counties have stage two fire restrictions in place. Those prohibit campfires and barbecues. And if you smoke, that's only allowed inside an enclosed space without vegetation. Well, it is confirmed this morning that three of our recent fires along the front range were human caused. Boulder County says researchers at CU were flying a drone to study severe weather and caused the Table Mountain fire Wednesday. The drone crashed, which caused a battery to pop out and ignite. The fire caused evacuations, but thankfully no homes were threatened. Boulder deputies also determined someone started the in-car fire near the Bear Canyon Trail, but the sheriff's office is still working to identify a suspect. And the Duck Pond fire, which sparked over the weekend near Gypsum, was also determined to be human caused. 95 acres burned, including some campsites. And the National Park Service says from unattended campfires to equipment malfunctions and more, 85% of wildfires are human caused. Colette Bordelon has a look at our roads this morning. It has been busy out there, Colette. It's been busy. There's a new crash up north. This one's on 25 in between Thornton Parkway and 104th. You can see it's involving two cars right here. This is from Air Tracker 7. If we take a look at our CDOT cameras, we should be able to see the backup. There you go. So you can see these cars just backed up right here. It is definitely causing some delays. Take a look at the maps. You can see exactly where that crash is. So like I said, it's in those 25 southbound lanes. So if you're trying to come into Denver, you might have some problems there. Now another little trouble spot crash in Inglewood on Evans at Tejon Street. You'll want to be aware of that if you're in that area. Then the right lane also closed. If you're headed out to the mountains on 70 West between Lookout Mountain and Genesee, there is an abandoned vehicle. So that right lane is closed. Returning to our fire coverage here, all of us need to be on our guards for days like this. But we've learned how local emergency responders change their tactics for red flag days. Denver 7's Christian Lopez is live near South Boulder Creek with the details on how they do that. Christian. Yeah, and fire crews are always ready to respond, but they are even more prepared on red flag days like today. When we're seeing this high fire danger, they have even more personnel that is ready to respond in case a fire does break out. You might see crews patrolling your neighborhoods or moving engines around to different locations. And officials say it's also very important for everyone to do their part also to prevent any fire from sparking. So avoid things like mowing your lawn, parking on dry grass, or using power tools that could start a fire. And of course, we never know if and when a wildfire could pop up. But so it is important to have an evacuation plan ready just in case. We are live in Boulder this morning. I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. Christian, thank you. Will some fire departments have the time to make preparations and to bring on more staff during times like these? But this is a luxury that most volunteer fire departments don't have. People with the Sugarloaf Fire Protection District train all year long, and they're working in more remote parts of Boulder County where there are no city or county services. In Sunshine Canyon, there's only one escape route if a fire were to come up County Road 83. We've told you this before, but we want to remind you it is critical for everyone to help prevent fires. That means no illegal campfires, which is the biggest problem the Sugarloaf Fire Protection District has been seeing lately. Hmm. Well, more than half of Colorado fire departments rely on volunteers to fill their ranks. Yeah, which is not an easy ask either. It costs the volunteers their money and time. Well, fire departments are seeing fewer volunteers in Colorado. We told you this week state lawmakers are trying to help those departments with two bills. One would provide $5 million for better equipment and more training, and a second would provide money for mental health resources. People don't think about that much, but um, you know we've had fires in the state where, where we've lost firefighters, and there's some real behavioral health issues there. And this bill puts in a million dollars towards that, but it's the training and get the equipment, everything they need. A little bit of everything. It costs about four thousand dollars per firefighter for all the gear for structural fires. A lot of volunteer fire departments also rely on hand-me-downs from other agencies, and these bills would help ease that burden. 
We'll be monitoring these conditions throughout the day and you can follow along on air. Plus, we have a 24 seven weather stream that's on the Denver 7 plus app for your streaming devices. Our fire coverage continues just ahead. The new technology that can sound the alarm about fires faster. And homes are about to get even more expensive. The new interest rate increase the Fed says is needed to slow inflation.